Hello again, I'm back and today I have a little bit of a more heated topic. Yeah, we're going to be talking about things I dislike with trailer slash camper living slash whatever you want to call it. What I want to talk about mainly and what I'm going to focus on is really inconveniences, annoyances, and or things that I overall just can't do. It doesn't feel like there's much at all that I can't totally do. We're going to talk about whatever I can think of. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Watching the logistics and analytics go up and up is really fun. So I'm glad you all are here and enjoying the content. Keep hitting the subscribe and the likes to let me know that you're enjoying it. Or just let me know what you want to see in the comments because I need some guidance. <laughs> The biggest thing about it is currently where we're camping out at or where we're paying to stay, it does not have running water. And that's because they winterized the pipes and where we live, they need to do that. And those aren't getting turned on until about a month later. This is an older trailer, so it's not all the way working. What we tried to do was get a big water barrel, pump water into the tank and then use it that way. Turns out, that our water pump doesn't work and the pipes aren't really working. Now, previous owners of this trailer have worked out the flooring and put in flooring after pipes burst or anything, obviously you have to do with the flooring. So with that, we don't know if they're... Either way, we're planning on ripping up the floor. We're planning on ripping out a whole section of the trailer. But with bathrooms and hygiene, we try to go to the bathrooms that are available to us as much as possible. And that is because we don't want to fill up our septic tank. So if you're considering this lifestyle, consider how you're going to deal with your own waste. I feel like with this way of living there's a way there's a workaround for everything i think we do have sewage disposable disposal i have a toothache because my wisdom teeth are becoming impacted again and it's not fun at all the other thing with bathrooms and hygiene is how are you going to shower now without running water you can't hook up anything to use a shower and that means you can't have hot water either and that also ropes in washing your dishes and things of that sort. How are you going to do all that? Obviously, laundry is completely out the door. You don't got a washer or dryer. Some places do offer on-site laundry if you're camping out there or extend camping there. Um, ours does not because we don't have the budget to really pay for something like that. Those are usually three, four, five, up to $800 a month. The same as an apartment. <laughs> um, and we couldn't afford that. So instead, what we do is we take showers at the shower houses that are available. Now that is a public shower. Now we don't get gym memberships. That's because of me. I understand that I go to a shower house, but at max, there's gonna be three people showering and I can choose when to go. It never closes, it's always on. And so we go either late at night or whenever suits us best. And so far, haven't dealt with anyone. They also have shower stalls so you can lock the door and everything um they also have it set up more like an actual shower house where it's uh, stalls and there's bathrooms as well and then they have an actual shower hut sort of deal where they have individual shower rooms um and that's what we really like and no matter what whichever camp camera in since we go back and forth between two campgrounds since it's a state park rule So we like coming to a certain one to take our showers and that's completely allowed. It's not that I hate it at all. It's actually kind of nice because it's forced me to take shorter showers, therefore using less water, therefore reducing my waste consumption and things like that. And I'm not trying to be really cognitively aware, but I am trying to kind of put it on the back burner so when we have the resources to, we can get more into like home composting and other ways of sustainably removing our waste and how we're gonna buy sustainably, which is really difficult where we live because we do not live in a very sustainable, accessible area. But along with that comes with electricity. Electricity is pretty easy to get by if you can somehow get your hands on a generator. We were lucky enough to get a generator donated to us when we moved out here because we were in a bit of a rough spot and we had a support system of people that decided to help us out. There's a whole nother thing with the generator of gas consumption and that's a whole deal of do you want to continue to have to buy gas, carry gas, bring gas back to where you're staying and then with gas if you're trying to warm your place up you're going to need propane as well to start your furnace. So on that front 
it's a lot harder to live outside of a park or a campground or a hookup area. Um, so it's really hard to do it just all on your own, going wherever you want to go. But if you're willing to stay somewhere for a campground or wherever with hookups, there's electricity hookups. And that makes everything super simple. Next on the list, I want to talk about... Next on the list, or next the thing that I want to talk about that I don't love about this way of living, is people. I don't like people, <laughs> just in general, but... I don't like being in close quarters when living with people and the one downside we have with living within a campground is we're just kind of at the will of how the campground is set up so if the campground's set up with the spots pretty close together we're going to be pretty close to other people and obviously a lot of people around here have trucks and trucks can be kind of loud so there's lots of trucks constantly starting and towing things around so it gets a little bit loud i will say i have learned to adapt and it was way easier to adapt to these noises. I think it's because it's the same noises over and over rather than within a city where it was kind of a wild card of what you would hear. And our apartment walls were very thin, so we heard a lot what was going on outside. For some reason, the people that are living out here from a trailer, they just are a little bit nicer. I can argue in our area, there is a lot of people that have a little bit more resources. So they have nicer trailers. They can afford the more private spots that you have to pay extra for. They definitely give a good aura to the neighborhood. And it is like a neighborhood. Everybody parks pretty close to each other. They don't stay spread out. And it's kind of an honor code system. We leave everything unlocked, everything. Being closer to people that you know, so getting to know your neighbors either, or moving, if you know somebody, you can find someone in the community, or we knew someone who actually had done this way of life, I think for about a year before we got into it. So he's been doing it about a year now. And he's been our big resource. He's been helping us out amazingly. So leaning on people during this was very key to our success. And I can definitely very much appreciate all the people that helped us out. Overall, there's really not that much to hate. <laughs> and that's just because I love this way of life. I'm trying to create more content around it to give people more of a, a realistic look into it of someone who did not have the money to do this the way that they really wanted to, of buying something really nice and being able to renovate it before you move and kind of that sort of deal but we're learning to love every step of it and it's been fun it's been rough it's been hard especially on my husband but it's it's been fun and that's because at the end of the day we can go to bed and realize that we've done it we've done all the things that need to be done there's no bills waiting to be paid there's no nothing it's just us at the end of the day and i think that's what's most beautiful about this life is you can really take life a lot slower with this way of life. And that's what we desperately needed when we were getting evicted out of the apartment. But I think that's all I have. I hope you guys enjoyed watching or at least got some information out of this. I'm planning on making maybe some crochet tutorials. If not that, a video talking about the things that I've made or what I plan on making. Just kind of that ordeal. Like I said, for now, we're all done. I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching. I am getting better at saying that. Thank you. Bye-bye. I feel like I need to up my my videos and how often I'm posting because I feel it feels too long. It feels like it's been too long. And of course the dog goes nuts. Of course. And I should probably turn off the space heater. again i'm back it's birdie i don't like that at all <laughs>